What's up, awesome people? Welcome on into One Nation, presented by Tony Bet, Wills and Trills yeah. with you on a very special show. Yeah. Because we have a special guest. Yeah. I'm running out of things to say to just make you go. Yeah. Well, maybe this will make you go. Yeah. Do you know who the guest is? Yeah. You do. <laughs> it is Pamadou Ka. Come on. Yeah. Mr. Ka, what a guy. He's going to be joining us in a few minutes. Uh, many of you know him as the former head coach of the Canadian Premier League team Pacific. That great win in the can champ as well over the Vancouver uh, Whitecaps. Yes. That was huge. We know that. Then he, of course, won the CPL title. The only other CPL team... Other than Forge, to there's only been the, two teams to have won. To slay the dragon. The CPL title. And that was Pacific under Pama Duka 2021. That also happened to be the very first year, my friend, where you became a one soccer pundit. You were at that game. You covered that game. I froze my <laughs> sweet tushy off <laughs> in that freezing rain. <sighs> and yeah, it's been up from there. No, a great, great scenes. I think at that time, too, in my playing career, I wasn't retired yet. I still had, I played another season, but... I just wanted to be in that moment in some capacity. But, uh, yeah, fast forward three years later, I'm here at U-Trails on yeah. the regular. Love yeah, it. you are. I know. It was, it was a special time. And you know what? He gave us some special moments with the team. He gave us some he special did. interviews. And that's why we're going to have another one, the man of the hour. Let's bring him on in. Now an assistant coach with Charlotte in Major League Soccer. There he is, Pamaduka. How you doing? Appreciate you taking the time. Thank you. Thank you. I'm doing well. How are you guys doing? Good. The big no bro. See. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's nice. I got What's my big sis. Jordan, how are you? I got the big bro, Palma Duka. Mm -hmm. How you doing? How you doing, brother? Good, good. We are fantastic. And, I mean, we're going to probably cover a bunch of topics with you, Pa. Obviously, we want to walk down memory lane, you know, more than anything in your time in the CPL and Pacific. And, obviously, we have our memories of you. We just touched on a couple of them here. And I know it wasn't easy for you even when you became the head coach because that was during the time of the pandemic and there was – the bubble, and then even the 2021 season kind of started in a little mini bubble for a month before it became a quote-unquote regular season. How challenging was that for you when, when you first took over? And, you know, how did, it, how did it challenge you both as a person and as a coach under those circumstances? I think I was more challenging um, more as a head coach because it was my f very first time uh, being a head coach and to be a head coach under those circumstances – it's not what you expect, uh, but given the kind of adversities I faced through my life and those moments really prepared for me, but also just, you know, being honest with the players and helping them because it's a different thing when football is taken away from you rather than you stop yourself. So given those moments where like football was taken away from the players, so my job then as a coach given that we had ambition to be one of the best team was to make sure that they understood that they need to be person first in those circumstances. And, and because they, the football was taken away from them. So I had to make them fall in love again with the game. And that helped me in 2020 to truly implement what we later saw in 2021. So there, there was a shift 2020, you had a certain squad. But 2021, mm -hmm. the names that were in that side, um, yeah. a lot of them ended up being, for me, like top players in, in the CPL and the history and whatnot. What was a part of the plan getting those players into 2021 and playing that attacking football that you guys did at that time? I mean, because um, because in 2020, it was a it was a 10-game season, right? And we didn't have that much of a training team, but... Being in the bubble uh, allowed me to scout players, which I was very grateful for because for me it was always before going out and given what the CPL was with the budget we have, can we look inside a country? Can we make Canadian players get better? Because that was all the time my mission. That's why I was a little bit reluctant to bring uh, foreign players, right? For me it was giving the opportunity to the younger players who deserve it. So when I So when we were in the bubble, I used it as a scouting uh, trip for me, right? To truly see the teams and get a better understanding of them, but also better feel of who the persons are. Because you were in the same hotel, you walk by, you walk past each other, right? You could see the games firsthand and you can see how also they dealt with adversities when they won or when they lost, right? So it was very clear for me. And 
and looking at how I wanted to play, some of the scouting trip was, for example, with money, right? I look at money and I say, you know what? We're missing this type of eight. We're missing a hybrid box-to-box -box type of eight with a great energy, you know, because we already had uh, Jamar, who, you know, who, who, you know, who for me was the captain and, you know, the backbone in the midfield together with Alessandro, who was coming into himself. So then you look, all right, how can you bring somebody that's going to give you that dynamism and that box to box and that goal because money and money money had goals in him right but he was playing a free role with york right number 10 moving everywhere so in my system it was how can i convert him into this hybrid eight slash ten some of the players as well under you speaking of that i mean have gone on and they've done some great things. I mean, Marco Bustos playing over in Europe. Lucas McNaughton has made a career for himself in Major League Soccer as well. How proud does that make you? Oh, no, that is very proud. For me, that for me, that was my mission. All right. When I came in with, with Rob and with Josh, we sat down and they explained to me that they want to develop young Canadians and hopefully sell them abroad because that's also what a football is, right? When you work at the club is sustainability and sustainability comes through player development and player uh, transfers so for me my very conversation my very first conversation with lucas was actually on the starbucks in langford and we were discussing about him and he explained to me what he wanted to achieve and then for me is always understanding the players why to start with right i'm not going to come in and say you have to do this and this my understanding of lucas was when i saw him is i saw a little bit part of myself in him but also my job as a head coach is to help him be the best version that he can be himself. And that is through challenging him mentally. That is through challenging him physically, tactically, what the games has to offer. But most of all, also being a personable person to him. So he, he can understand that he can come to me if it's a problem. He can come. For me, it's not only about what you do on the pitch. It's also how do you like live your life as a professional off the pitch. And he was showing those signs as well. So for me to see him not only play in MLS, which he wanted, but also playing for the Canadian national team, which I believe he still is, can do because he's one of the best center backs for me. If you if if you look at it with the obviously Bombito, them coming on board, right? Uh, Cornelius and, and then you have Waterman. I think you can put uh, Lucas in the category when he's healthy. And Bustos, yeah, we have a history because... Uh, <laughs> When I came to Vancouver, and I mock him for this always, he was the first player I ever seen play for the national team before he even played club football. Mm. So, so that was kind of funny moment with him, with me and him. But I've always taken him on the, under my wing because I always believed he has something. But he is also a guy that you need to challenge and give uh, confidence. But if you look at those squads, Oli, who turned out to be one of the greatest players in the uh, in the CPL, Oli Bassett. You know, I scouted him from uh, New Zealand, which I happened to have a friend who I played with uh, in Europe. And I was asking him and I went, listen, I know he's playing in New Zealand. I can't, I've, I've seen 10 seconds of him. Honestly, that's the honest truth. I'm home with my wife and I'm watching Oliver said, I'll look at his first touch and I turn to my wife. I say, oh, I like him. And, and, and that's it. And I say, you know what? I'm going to call my guy to get information about him. And that's how it came by. There's a player we got to speak about. And in this office, there's a few pictures. One that I see every day, though. So, Oh, what are you doing? I, are I you had doing? to bring this one up, right? Because this player, oh. this picture also says a lot. This is Alessandro Hajab Report, a former oh. Pacific player, now plays for Forge. And I told him a few weeks back, I said, you're probably the best CDM this league has to offer at, at 24 years old. When yes. you had him in 2021 and you guys won and beat Forge at Tim Hortons Field, he yeah. played a crucial role on the day, scoring that goal, but also yeah. just the way that he played in the midfield. And then that for me was the tip the scales for him winning the U21 Player of the Year award. My question to you is, did you ever think he was going to be as good as he is now? And do you feel that he could also be a part of the Canadian men's national team program at some point? Then we have to go way back, Jordan. Do it. We got time. We have to go, we have to go way back till 20, 2016. It's when I first saw Alessandro play for the uh, Vancouver Whitecaps U, U16. And 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 I was I was I was I was I was in a war with him because of his quality that he possessed. 
And for me to be able to coach him, I mean, it was a dream come true because I always wanted to coach somebody like me because he already saw the game ahead. But sometimes for him, he had to go through some growing pains to truly understand what his quality was. And I think he will tell you that because when I see somebody have something for me, he has to get it all out. And for me, I will go above and beyond for him to reach. You know, and for me, he's by he's he's he's, he's due. I'm not. I think he's due to be looked at in the national team. That's just me because I think he possesses some of the qualities that that is needed. You know, and I and I think he can still uh, go and play in MLS. I've always believed that about him and beyond because just of the qualities that he possesses. But we have to get him out of him, and that was the thing with me and him. It was a constant battle, and he will tell you. It was a constant battle because I played him sometimes in the eight just for him to understand the position, but he's by nature in number six and he's so intelligent. He reminds me of a, I would say, Canadian version of Pirlo. That's the best way to describe him, right? The game becomes, the, 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 game, the game is so easy. I will not say easy, but he sees the game and he's always calm. You will never see him flustered. Mm -hmm. But I think there's still two, three gears in him. Hmm. Wow. That's high praise. That is definitely high praise. Uh, I just want to, as, as we continue our walk down memory lane, Pama Dukha joining us here, a former head coach of Pacific. Again, the tough time when you first came on board with the pandemic and the bubble. Pa, I'm an only child. I cannot share my space. If someone's in my face for too long, I get very frustrated. So uh -huh. when you go back to the bubble, what was maybe something that challenged you, even tested your patience? And then maybe what was something that is a really great memory? from the bubble. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> uh, but I think, I think, yeah, who is it? Jamal, Jamal always keeps saying it. Jamal said we should have made a video. We should have made a movie about the bubble. No, there were some couple of things in the bubble that obviously, you know, it was, it was, it, it was one of a kind thing because this is something that we human nature, it was so unexpected and you have to deal with a month of being in a bubble in each other's space. Teach you a lot. You learned a lot. But there were some things in the bubble that, yeah, for me, it was beautiful to see because as a head coach, you see the personalities of the players. It, you, it was no, it was no way to hide, you know. But I remember when, um, when we lost to Forge, uh, and we and we were watching the video. There was, yeah, that was it. That was the, there were some things that was thrown around, and there was definitely some things that that came out. It was, it was a good, it, it was, it was a great moment. I mean, I think the bubbles truly helped us and uh, set us up to be successful in 2021. I'll be fair with you, but there were some things that there were there were some things in our room that day that was that, let me say it like that 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 was a great moment. <laughs> I want to be a fly on the wall. <laughs> that, but also, I I would say like um, like uh, the barbecue and sometimes we went to uh we went we went out to the beach i remember that we you know as a team they, they drove you to the beach and i forget which beach it was but we were we were on the rocks and with some of the players we were like singing making noise you know just singing as a group and it was it was it was unbelievable to say it like that nah the the bubble is a one time experience which i think um, <laughs> nah it's honestly it was it was it was because and I think that was very important for the for the CPL, even though to have that uh, ten game season going. Because if not, I don't think it would have been problematic for the for the league. Mm -hmm. But the league found a way, but also the players found a way, because that was not the easy time. And for the players to show up and play the game that they love, you know, I think when you look back at it, there's a lot to thank all of those players who were at the bubble at that time from the everything, but also owners and everybody that worked around it just to make it happen, I think was very beneficial. The the Winnipeg bubble in 2021, hard to call it a bubble because you end up playing a full season of 28 games yeah. after. But when yeah. I met you, you're speaking Danish to me, by the way, Paul knows sound <laughs> languages, by the way. Jeez, yes. So I'm in the elevator, spoke something to me, I turned around, I'm like, yeah. you know, as, a, as an opposing team coach, but we connect on that story. But the first story I heard about you was in 2020, you became a chef in the kitchen. I just want you to oh. tell me <laughs> if that story is true, that you were cooking up in the kitchen because the food wasn't up to par. Oh, do tell. What did you yes. cook? It's no, true. Honestly, <laughs> yeah, because for me, it was, it was when we went into the bubble, obviously, you know, um, it was only us. And I remember we got... 
the food was not at its best, right? So, and for, <laughs> me, and for me, when you players have to perform, for me, the biggest thing for me as a head coach is to make sure that the preparation is right. And the preparation also includes nutrition. And you cannot have people eating pulled pork before they go play a game. <laughs> that for me, you cannot just happen. So, or like or beef steak before a game, you like, you like what is happening here. So I took it up upon myself to chat a little bit with the chefs, you know, to ask them, listen, I, I'm, I'm willing to go in and I'm willing to go into the kitchen and cook a meal for my place. Because at the end of the day, if I'm asking them to perform and they don't have the right circumstances to perform, who am I then to say something to them? So I, I didn't want to make any excuses for them. So then for me, it was their performance was the most important thing and how they felt. So whatever it takes, I'm going to do it for them to perform on the pitch because then their job is done. But as a coach, I could not just sit there and then expect them to perform eating pulled pork or, 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 or beef before a game. I just couldn't. Mm. So I sneak myself into the kitchen because, you know, I, I had a good relationship with one of the chefs. So he allowed me to cook African food and, you know, and I serve it to my place. <laughs> what was and, it? And yeah, it was, um, it was, it's called Domoda. It's a peanut soup. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a peanut. Uh, She's looking at her lips. Soup. Peanut soup, you're ready. <laughs> any type of food you're ready to try. Yeah, I'm, I'm willing to eat any kind of food, so, that's for sure. So, you know, so, yeah, I tell you, if uh, next time I'll make sure that uh, I'll cook and I'll send it over to you guys. <laughs> no, but that's, no, but that's what we did. So, and from then on, I just decided that uh, together with Rob, I said, Rob, listen, uh, for us, if we can order outside food, let's do it for the players. And if they don't, if they don't perform, it's on me. Hmm. Then if they don't perform, it's on me, and I'll take it fully on, on board. So for me, it was very important that I also protect the place. We're we're taking a bunch of trips down memory lane, but I want you to to see your face when you hear the date, December fifth, twenty twenty one, where you go to Tim Hortons Field, and at that time for me did the impossible. I remember that was my first game covering, <laughs> and just being very forge heavy because. Of yeah, their you run guys were and the I know, because I was I was not happy with you. Everyone, <laughs> you're upset, big bro, but I just did what I felt. Uh -huh. And you guys good. surprised me. Not to say that this team, we'll go through the list of McNaughton, Chung, uh, TMG, Mayor Jaguar, Haynes, Hajab Report, Aparicio, Jamar Dixon, Terry Campbell on the left, Dos Santos up top, Hurd on the right, with a yep. bench of Data Luke, Sean Young, Ali Bassett, Bustos, Polisi. Yep. You guys had a team, however. Yeah. They had a team. People that I've talked to that played for you said that you believed long before that final. Just please yeah. tell us any gem you want to about going into that game because you believed far more than anyone else ever did. No, because um, again, again, we take it back to 2020, all right? So in 2020, we played them and Forge was the only team we couldn't beat. And, and then you fast forward to 2021, we go into the Winnipeg bubble and both games, I felt that we, we didn't deserve to lose because I think we played a very good game. We were toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. But what Forge, were, Forge are very good at, and I give them credit, is that when the game is tilting and nobody's winning, they know how to strike. And they did it to our boys, and they, know how, and they had that experience. They had the know-how that we wanted to get to. Mm -hmm. So after we lost the second game, we in the bubble, I tell them, guys, I do not care about this because when it mattered the most is when we're going to play them and we're going to win. Hmm. And I said that, and when we fast forwarded going in and, uh, and knowing, knowing that we're going to play them. And I look, I looked at all the games, all the games that we played them. I looked at, I looked it back at my house. My wife would tell you this. I didn't even sleep. I was looking back all the games, trying to look at, all right, where where did we lose the game and why? Hmm. So looking back at it and then looking at everything and one thing came to my mind and I'm like, what will they do when they have the ball? Because they always see Pacific attacking. So now I'm gonna switch it on them. I'm gonna tell them, here's the ball, do what you gotta do with it. Hmm. So that was the moment because they did not expect us to come and sit. I didn't. But the day before, the day before, what also what triggered me was everybody. No, sorry. What triggered me was 
was, I'll be honest with the video that he made promising that they were going to have a title in that locker room in two weeks. Because mm. he promised before the game was played. And if people know me and people that truly know me as a competitor, if you do that against me once, that is a sign of disrespect. Second, you're not in charge of results. Because the result, nobody's in charge of. And if you make your promise, you better, you better, you, you better come through it. And anybody that knows me that when you say that, and I'll be honest, because my wife is witness to that. I almost sent that video to him and going, are you sure? And then going back at it on the day before, when we had to do, when we have to do, when we had to do the media, I could tell that everybody was saying, this is a three-peat. It's a three-peat. Are they going to make history? They're going to make history. They're going to make history. That's why I, that's why when we want it, when we want into the room, I said, now speak now. Because one thing is that when people want a team to win, but forgetting that they still got to play the game in 90 minutes, regardless of what you've done. And when you said to me, and when you hear people say, ah, we play, well, you play final to win. No, no, me, I don't play the final. I win finals. <laughs> I don't play finals. I win finals. Listen, Pa, remind me to never make a video where I doubt you, because I don't want it showing up in the mail at my house with don't a message from fuel. you saying, are you sure? <laughs> so that's why you understand are why you I made sure? that dance. So now uh, you understand great. why I made that dance. Yeah, yeah. Now you guys understand why I made that dance. Yeah, it's all coming together now. Um, because for me, when you make something, you better make sure that you come through. That's why, but one thing I knew that going into the final, and one other thing that um, the players can tell you that before the season, I always ask my players three things, all right? One, what do you want to achieve together with this team? Two, what is your own individual achievement that you want to ask? And three, what are you going to do? So when the players wrote it down the day before, uh, the day before, I gave it back to them. And all of them wrote, we want to become CPL champion in 2021. So before we put the video uh, game plan and everything, they saw it on their seats when they're coming in for our final video prep. It was on their chairs. Hmm. I love that. I love that kind of motivation. And, you know, hearing everything that you have to say about how you coached Pacific mm -hmm. um, yeah. just says a lot about you as a coach, as a person. And I'm curious to also know how you would describe how you've evolved over these years. Because obviously, as we know, when you left uh, Pacific, your journey has taken you to MLS Next Pro. Now here you are in Major mm -hmm. League Soccer as an assistant coach with yeah. Charlotte. How have you seen yourself evolve as a coach? And, you know, obviously, do you still have aspirations to be a head coach? Oh, yeah. The aspiration to be head coach number one is always there. And it's always going to be there. I believe I believe that I'm going to achieve it. You know, it's about being patient. But I've also evolved as a human. I've also evolved as a coach. I've learned different new methods, seeing other coaches, uh, seeing other organizations, how they work. This is always was, this is always beneficial for me. And this is the things that I always seek for, for myself. It's always never standing still, but going in uh environments that are uncomfortable for me to test myself to better myself to learn and get better because at the end of the day for you to become a better so must be in all situations and i've learned a lot when i was in north texas again how to better myself when it comes to talent development how how to be a better man management now that you're dealing with younger players that are younger than what you had maybe in pacific how are you? How how does the organization how does the organization function as a whole? And then you come to Charlotte, and then now you also dealing with real professionals, right? You are dealing with real emotions, which is not new to me because I've also spent that environment twenty years as a player. So that helps me and it gives me guidance. But the biggest thing that I've always said is I'm always myself. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. I'm always myself, and when I when you yourself as a person, regardless of where you are people always going to respect and understand who you are and what you come from. Mm -hmm. And I will never lose that because that's just who I am. And because I love this game so much and I'm a student of the game, for me, I'm always looking to how can I evolve myself and also how can I make the players achieve their dream because that's the reason why now I'm a coach. 
it's not for me to 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 it's for me it's for me to use my experience to guide these players and be the best version of they can be themselves that's why when i when you guys mention players you see me smile because that is the greatest joy ever that that for me is the greatest joy right winning winning and results somebody is going to come and win more somebody is going to take it but those memories that you create together and the things the legacy you leave behind for me is the greatest ever mm -hmm. paul when i uh follow your career and just even you speaking about time in vancouver and, and pacific yeah. and uh, vancouver island Canada's near and dear to your heart. Could we see you coming back here? Is this a place that you would love to coach again or bring the family and be here again? Oh, yeah. No, I mean, I love Canada, honestly. As, <laughs> I, like I said, I, I just, because, you know, two of the greatest gifts that I have in my life is my daughters, and they're both born in Vancouver, you know? But Canada, for me, I've always said this, is a, is, is a hidden game when it comes to football. Because the amount of talent that runs around in Canada and the dual citizenship that many of these players have, they're just looking for a greater platform. That we that we couldn't discover Bombito, who's now gone to Nice, that tells you a lot. Mm -hmm. That tells you a lot. There's a lot of players running around in Canada. And the CPL has done a great job, but I think they could do even a greater job of promoting Canadian players. Because every strong league in the world, the backbone is Canadian players. And people can say, ah, that they're not good. Listen, players are good if you offer them opportunity. It's the same with coaching. If nobody's offering coaches opportunity, we cannot know who's good and who's bad. So when you offer players opportunity, you will know whether they're good or bad. But it's how do we continue to produce those players? Yeah. They're valid. <laughs> You know this, Jordan, right? True. How many players are in Toronto that can play in CPL? How many teams are in Quebec? How many players are in Quebec yeah. that runs around? Yeah. True. That just need an opportunity. In Vancouver, Vancouver Island, right? There's plenty of them. Mm -hmm. You yeah. meaning to tell me that if we don't put the resources and maybe get to 10, 10 teams, 12 teams, trust me, then Canada is going to have a hand in what is happening in North America. Agreed. Honestly, I see. Yeah. For me, it's, it's, and obviously, I mean, one day maybe, if God willing, one day, there's nothing more I would love than to coach your national team. Yeah, my goodness. I mean, Pa, you're singing the tune that we love to hear. And again, you've done so much already in Canadian soccer with your time in the CPL. And we could talk to you all day. I could talk to you all week. Um, but uh, we got to let you go now. But we wish you all the best and really appreciate you taking the time here today on One Nation. Take care, Pa. No, thank you. I appreciate you. And still, I'm still watching. Every time I see you guys, I'm, I'm still watching. And I love the show. Keep it going. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so Bye -bye. much. Pa Maduka. I mean, what an incredible human being. We could go on forever about him as a coach. What an incredible human being. Keeping an eye still on Pacific, on the league, everything. He was, he cares, he, he cares. he's a heck of a player, apparently. Yeah, well, and I mean, we didn't even get to that. We, I mean, again, we just need like a two hour show or something because he was a player in Vancouver during Alfonso Davies time, mm -hmm. you know, and, and obviously he saw the talent in Davies at that time. But I would even have loved to have picked Pa's brain about Davies and did he see him doing what he is doing? Exactly. Champions League, you know, he has how many Champions League titles, being sought after by Real Madrid. But this is somebody, you know, Pa had a, had a hand in Alfonso Davies' career at such a young age too. It's incredible. It is incredible. He's been in, yeah, he's been in the focus for sure. As just players I know that have played with him just said, you could not get past this guy. Like he was so strong. The same way he is and the same way he speaks, huh. he was just that guy yeah. that, that really broke players down. You sure about that? <laughs> Are you sure? Are you sure oh, that you want to say what you just said about me? <laughs> it was so great. So great. <laughs> yes, Pa Maduka, a former head coach of Pacific in the CPL, now assistant coach with Charlotte. They're sixth. Mm -hmm. Doing well. Yeah, they have a chance. He's a squad. Uh, yeah, look, looking good to, to make the playoffs as well and still aspirations of being a head coach will continue to follow his career that's for sure as he continues to watch one soccer and that's what you've been watching right now one nation with wills and trills thanks for tuning in we'll see you next time